Uh, okay, uh, finally, uh, anomaly detection. Okay, so the idea here is to look for something unusual. Okay, maybe there's some characteristic, general characteristic of viruses, either the code itself or the behavior of the virus. You know, maybe it makes some network connection, you know, stuff like this that I wouldn't ordinarily see. Anything, anything unusual. Okay, I'm looking for something unusual that I could flag and say, okay, this might be a, a virus or some, some sort of attack. So what sort of unusual things might you look for? Uh, maybe a file changed in some unexpected way, uh, or it doesn't behave as it did before, and there's something unusual going on there, network activity that you wouldn't expect to see, uh, file access, so on and so forth. Anything you can think of that might be unusual. Okay. Uh, you know, this sounds good, sounds plausible, but kind of the catch here is that you, first of all, have to figure out what's normal, right? Somehow you have to measure what's normal for this system or this particular user. Then, this is kind of the hard part, okay? You have to allow that normal to change over time. I mean, you think about it, the way you're using your computer today is not the same way you, you were using it six months ago. Okay, so it has to be allowed to adapt over time. Well, okay, what's wrong with that? Well, think about it from Trudy's perspective. What might you do as an attack here? <laughs> yeah. Okay, since it's changing or allowing for change over time, if you are just patient and you go, go slow, you can probably be successful. Okay, don't change the behavior too radically all at once. Just change it a little bit. It will adapt to that. Change it a little more. It will adapt to that. And in fact, there was a talk I saw a few years ago at uh, DEF CON, I think the title says it all. Um, it was, uh, oh, well this technique, this sort of thing is used in intrusion detection as well, you know, sort of similar thing. So the, the title was, Why Anomaly-Based Intrusion Detection is a Hacker's Best Friend. And it was basically making that point, if you just go slow. And he had done some tests on some real systems and found that he could actually do this. Okay, so what's, you know, so what's the point? What's the potential advantage here? Well, again, it's that case where you could conceivably detect malware that nobody's ever seen, okay? Because you would just detect some behavior or some activity that the malware's doing without having ever seen the actual malware. Yeah? Wouldn't it be helpful, though, just to slow it down? Because then you might detect it by other means and it would give you time to respond that you wouldn't have Yeah, I mean, that's a thought, right? I mean, you know, if you think about it, a lot of stuff that system administrators do um, is really just designed to slow down attackers. It's not designed to prevent attacks. You know, if you look at the, uh, they'll often go in and they will use a, a weird uh, port. You know, they won't use a standard port for this particular, you know, file transfer or whatever. Or they will rename files and move them around in the file system to non-standard places. That's not going to prevent an attack, but it's going to make the attacker sort of poke around and look, you know, and have to do some work to figure out where these things are. <coughs> and in doing that, you know, it just may leave traces, right? It takes them longer. That's good. Slow them down is, is probably a good thing. Okay, so that's that's not a pro you know it's not a problem unless the attacker is really smart and you know doesn't leave any traces and then it could be a problem. Okay, but again, this is the big thing. Okay, you want to be able to detect something you've never seen before. That's a huge advantage. Okay, if you can do that, you can start a business and make a fortune out here in Silicon Valley. I guarantee it. Okay, um, actually, at my startup company, we had a uh, one of our consultants we had come in, he later went to work for uh, a company called Securify, I think it is. Uh, there's a famous cryptographer, uh, El Gamal, he started, he, he developed a signature scheme, he actually was the founder of this company. Anyway, the, the purpose of this company was to uh, basically build an anomaly-based intrusion detection system. And I talked to him a couple years later. He, he'd given up on that company and moved to Yahoo or somewhere. So I talked to him a few years later. He said, you know, um, it was like we were trying to sell this thing to people, and really all we could offer was the potential, the potential to detect some very thin layer of attacks, you know, these zero-day attacks, attacks that nobody's ever seen, but at tremendous effort and tremendous expense. <laughs> it was kind of a hard sell, I think. 
So anyway, uh, the disadvantages of this sort of thing, I think there's a lot, okay? I think, you know, I really think of anomaly detection as kind of a, a research area. You know, I don't really see a lot of products that do this. Now, you have to be a little bit careful when you look at uh, commercial products. Uh, I had a guest lecturer come in like a couple years ago from, I won't say where, from a well-known company. And he came in, and the title of his talk was something about anomaly-based detection. But, and it was like a commercial product they were selling, right? But when you looked at what they were actually doing, it wasn't anomaly-based detection okay, at all. What they were doing was they had a system for, essentially a system for generating signatures very quickly and updating their database. You know, so they'd have all these you know, honey pots out there get, getting attacks, getting information on attacks, and they would update their signatures as quickly as possible. And that's good, but it's not anomaly-based detection in this sense. But it sounds good when you try to sell it, anomaly-based detection. Um, okay, so you know, in, in this sense, I think it's a research uh, topic. Um, it's, uh, there's no real proven system out there. Right? That, that's my, my view on it. it. You still have to combine it with another system. You would not use anomaly-based detection exclusively. It would be foolish to try to detect by anomaly-based methods to detect things that you can detect with signatures. That would be foolish. Signatures are much more efficient, much more effective than this will ever be. So you use this for the unusual, you know, zero-day sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, ultimately, to, to me, this seems like, you know, kind of an artificial intelligence problem. You need something really smart to detect these kinds of attacks. Because you're sort of playing a game here with Trudy. Can Trudy outsmart you? You know, your software has to be smarter than Trudy. That's kind of like an artificial intelligence problem to me. And I'm not optimistic about that either. Yeah? I'll actually question about that's the 565, uh, the change okay. detections. Because, I mean, if it's a new virus, then at the end it's not going to be detected at all because you have to get the signature detection. Yeah, so the question is, what do you do when you detect the change, right? I mean, maybe if you're super cautious or it's a file you don't expect to change, you assume it's infected. Then you're good. Okay, that's good. But if it's a file that changes a lot, you know, you're not so super cautious, what do you do? You don't want to get rid of this file. How, what do you fall back on to really be sure it's an infection? The basic problem is all these false positives. How do you deal with all the false positives? And whatever you do, it's likely that some will slip through. Okay? That's sort of the point. Or is there any like new world application that should prevent the false? Uh, what's, what's that? Is there any like, uh, detection algorithm or like antivirus actually prevent that kind of like, real risk. Well, if you have ideas, you know, you can go work for Symantec and they'll be glad to hire you. <laughs> so if you can get perfect detection, you can get really strong detection of malware that people have not seen before, that, that's a big deal. That, that's a hard problem. Okay. okay. Okay, got the distinction here. Signature detection, change detection, anomaly detection. Okay, all these are actually used, but by far the biggest is signature detection. Okay, 99% probably of the virus scanning that's done is signature-based or slight 